Good afternoon, my name's Tim Hazel. I'm the Chief Financial Officer for Port Stephens Council. As some of you may be aware, we're out discussing with the community at the moment rate rise options so the council can consider its options going forward. Coming out of that e period of engagement, we've noticed that there's a lot of questions about around the vexing issue of rate or land va revaluations, which are going to come into effect in our council area from July next year. The first slide, just to set, to set the scene, we're using an example here of having 10 properties and they're all valued at $100,000. Our total rates that we're allowed to levy is $10,000. So simply $10,000 divided by the 10 properties gives us a rate of $1,000 per property. So that sets, sets the scene. We know that the total land value, we've assumed in this particular case, is 100,000. So the total land value is a million dollars. You divide that into the income of the rates to provide the cents in, in the dollar that will apply to your rates. Sets the scene. Now, what happens is when we have a revaluation, the valuer general comes around every three years and will revalue all of the properties in the council area. We've assumed in the second graph here that the rates that we can still raise is the 10,000 10, in total, that our valuations have increased by 30% across the board. So old valuations, 100,000, the new valuations become 130,000, the 30% increase. Our total valuations for the council area, 1.3 million. We divide the 1.3 into the 10,000 of the rates that we're allowed to levy and we get a different rate in the dollar cents or an ad valorem rate. Multiplying the ad valorem by the new valuation, you can see we come up with $1,000. So even though our valuations have gone up, we still can't raise any more than the 10,000 and because the valuations have been consistent across the properties, everyone's rates remain the same. That's the simple version. Now, if we assume that, again, we start with the 10 properties at 100,000, some will go up by 10%, some will go up by 20%. Multiplying the old valuation by the increase, some are now valued, or the top five, at $110,000, the bottom five by 120. Total land value, 1.15 million. Dividing that into, again, our total rate pi of $10,000 gives us a new rate in the dollar, cents in the dollar, an ad valorem. Multiplying that by your valuation will give you your new rate amount to be paid. Again, we're only raising the 10,000 because that's the amount that we were able, able to charge. You can see those properties that had the smaller increase in land valuation actually had rates that came down. They were $1,000 before, down to 957. Those that have gone up by 20% 20, 20 will pay more. What's that? 4.4% increase in, in their rates. So the points to be drawn out of it all, total rates stays the same. We're not allowed to levy any more than that. It's simply the composition that is charged to each individual rate part based on your increases in your land valuations. Now, the, the next one is when we have a rate cap. So we started in the previous one with a, a rate amount of $10,000. We're assuming in this case that the rate cap can go up by 10%. So we're allowed to levy $11,000. Sets, sets the scene. That's the total amount of rates that we can raise. Again. The valuation increase, 10 and 20% for half. The new valuations all add up to 1.15 million. Dividing that into the rates income gives us a new rate in the dollar. Multiply one by the other, and you can see that there's some various changes to the rates that are charged to individual accounts. The smaller increase, while the land valuations only increased by 10%, the rate increase in that regards 5.2 and the other's 14.8, taking into account that extra rates. 
Land revaluations, I think that's all we have. Wanting to re reiterate the rate capping regime that, that applies, and we talk about a rates pie. In this example, the rates pie was $10,000. If there's a 10% increase, it goes up by 1,000, so the new rate will be $11,000, and then we distribute that out and amongst the rate payers. Thank you. Okay, and that's all we have, or, or the very quick version of what a rate revaluation will do in our particular council area. I do note that we're still out in the, on the engagement process at this point in time. All of this information is on the website and is freely accessible. I'd also encourage everyone to go on there, complete the short survey. It closes next Wednesday, the 12th of October, and Council will be considering all of the submissions and uh, comments that are made through that process shortly thereafter.